This is Mark Bell from Super Training Gym. Super Training Gym, the strongest gym in the West. We got another voiceover for y'all. Got that lever belt going. We just came out with this recently. Uh, really proud of uh, the, the design of this belt. We got my girl Stephanie going for some deadlifting and lifting with some bands on there. Ripping those weights up. Embarrassing all the men in the gym. Because she's lifting more than all of us. Not very nice of her. Um... We got some bands on there, and remember, the bands are to accommodate resistance. The weights are heavier at the top and lighter at the bottom. One thing that I always forget about band work and chain work, good speed right there. That's how you do a speed set. You want to do your speed sets with a lot of aggression, um, almost making it look like you're trying to break shit. This kid's an absolute animal. This is Kenny. He's 19 years old. He works in our warehouse. Jeez. He's uh he's a mutant and he like doesn't know he doesn't understand that he's a mutant which is, which is good but he'll continue to get better really excited just to see him uh, rip up some big numbers uh, in the future one thing to keep in mind about bands and chains is because they accommodate resistance and because the weight is lighter at the bottom and heavier at the top we end up with a great opportunity uh, to utilize these exercises during times where we're kind of hurt or banged up. Because if you're hurt, let's say that you're going to do a, uh, let's say you're going to do a bench press. Got my boy Sully going here. Uh, looks like he has about, looks like he has about 365 on there or 455. I'm not sure. I can't see anymore. Getting old. Easy, easy weight. Uh, just uh, hitting up that uh, safety squat bar. That's actually a transformer bar from our boy Chris Duffin. Oh, he's got some jumping going on in between. Damn. Nice athleticism from that chubby young kid. Oh, hard time getting down on the box. That was total fat kid. He had an athletic maneuver that went down, and then it turned into a fat kid thing. We got Steph going with 275 pounds. Got that sumo technique. Getting the legs out wide, trying to drive the knees out. Trying to get some good, uh, good posture in the upper body. And holding it together. And she is a, uh, I guess you could even say current gymnast and she's a gymnastics coach um but she's a former competitive gymnast and current uh coach of gymnastics and uh, you can see it when she moves in the gym the different things that she'll do in the gym the different exercises you're like shit man okay well that's that's probably how the human body's supposed to move not like a bunch of us neanderthal men and in, in are super stiff and from years of lifting uh she moves really well that's a huge component to lifting uh, but what can happen sometimes is some people move uh, too much or so much that it can sometimes become uh, it can sometimes become problematic because you're you're moving a lot but then you're not strong. Uh, but Steph has a great combination of both, and I think that's what attracted her to powerlifting in the first place and, and want her wanting to get into the gym. Probably she always had a, a fairly uh, thin physique, and she probably was like, "I want to be more Jack, and I want to be stronger." And so she's been working on that. She's been killing it. Back to the analogy with the accommodating resistance. So let's say you have a, b a bum shoulder. Well, if you have a crappy shoulder, you can buy a slingshot. You can go over to markbellslingshot.com, and that'll help a lot because that accommodates resistance very similar to the way the bands and chains do. The weights are going to be lighter at the bottom and heavier at the top. So even by just using bands and chains, though, you can get a similar effect. So um, the weight is going to be lighter at the bottom of a bench press, which could... Uh, give you a little bit of an advantage if you have a weak shoulder, you got something uh, that's banged up. Another great example of it, there's our boy Drew pulling on some weight. Um, another great example of it is a uh, tricep extension. We do tricep extensions in this gym quite a bit and you know your, your triceps just get trashed and your elbows get trashed but when you do it with chains it's almost like zero weight at the bottom and you get a heavier weight at the top. 520 pounds right there by our boy Kenny with probably about 100 pounds of uh, band tension. Pound Town, going to Pound Town. That's a uh, smoky, smoky shirt. Got our boy Kirby, going with 425. Super, super strong dude. This guy can do like uh, body weight stuff that just kind of freak you out, like crazy amount of pull-ups and pull-ups with a ton of weight and just, this is strong, strong mofo. Strong on the bench squat and deadlift actually. Got Kevin going with 495. Don't tell me Kenny beat everybody. Is that true? Is that what happened on this day? Uh, you know, we can't have we can't have the young kid like, kicking everybody's ass. He's gonna he's gonna start to think too highly of himself. But yeah, accommodating resistance is something I've been using for a long time. Um, a lot of the, a lot of the techniques and uh, 
Things like that came from Louis Simmons, West Side Barbell. The accommodating resistance also is going to help you to produce more force and uh, help you accelerate through the weights. And it can help you a lot with like your lockout on a bench squat or deadlift because the weights are heavier at the top. Got our boy John going. Got that hair combed over the side, chalking up, ready to rock and roll. Uh, you're, you're noticing that there's a lot of people pulling sumo, a couple of people pulling conventional. And people are always like, how do you know which way you should deadlift? Well, we're power lifters, so whatever way you lift the most weight is, is a good way to go. And also, just in general, um, it's good to keep that in mind in your training just anyway. Like, what are some things that you move some good weight in? And those things that you move uh, decent amounts of weight in should be, most of the time, they should be your, your kind of first movement or your main movement of the day. So you got, like, something like a bench, something like a squat, something like a deadlift. And then any variations of those things. Those are going to be things that you want to kind of front load your workout with because you're going to be able to handle some heavy weight uh, with those exercises. And you can even extend that out into other exercises like a leg press and, and things like that. Slowly going with a big deadlift right here. You're going to notice a lot of the men and women that are lifting in this video or men, men and women um, that are lifting in this video. You're going to notice that we try to set up the exact same way every time. You saw Sully, uh, you know, getting a flat back before he pulled. He raised the hips up, and he dropped the hips down, and he, he got into that pull and got under it. If you guys want to check out some of the products, you know, go over to markbellslingshot.com. You're seeing a lot of these people wearing our strong belt. Like I said, that lever belt just came out. Great addition. We sold a shit ton of them on our first day, so really proud of it. And thank you for anybody that supported that. But we have knee sleeves. We got elbow sleeves. We got wrist wraps. We had you covered pretty much head to toe. Woo! Nice pull there by Kirby. I think that smoky shirt helped him to uh, finish that lift. Without that shirt, I don't know if he would have got it. By the way, where is Smokey? How come Smokey's not in this? Did Smokey retire? I don't know. Weird. Uh oh, 575 pounds. Kevin going for the win. Kevin's got this pretty easy. He's a strong dude. Yeah, that was pretty smooth. But he'll probably stop. Because that's what, you know, we need we need these people to be more aggressive. He should do 595 or 600. We'll see. We'll see what happens. 305 for Steph. But keep in mind this band, you know, these bands are giving, the way she has it set up, probably about 80 pounds at the top. Maybe, maybe 60 pounds. But yeah, like, that's just crazy. You know, the, the females, what the females have done in power, the thing is, uh, Nothing short of remarkable. And in CrossFit and some other spaces too, but um, when you compare male athletes to female athletes, when it comes to strength, you're just like, uh, I think the girls are kind of kicking our ass at this point. When you consider their body weight, you know, that's the other thing I think we forget sometimes. We forget that they don't, pop, they probably just don't weigh that much. So that's something to think about. Oh, Kenny going for the victory, 585. I don't know if this will be the last the last lift, but let's see what happens. Oh, that moved pretty smooth. Oh, there's Smokey. Smokey coming in at the 11th hour after the lifting's been done with already. Trying to make it seem like he's going to do something. That's a great pull right there. I think a lot of times when people lift with bands and chains, they sometimes think that, you know, a 585 deadlift with bands is, you know, going to equal to be like a 635-pound deadlift. And that's not true. Um, so you need to know, you need to know where you're at still. You can't just lift with bands and chains and then go to a meet and think you're going to exponentially lift more because the weight that you lifted on the band, you know, represented hundred pounds more than what was actually on the bar. The reason why that won't work is because it's a deadlift and you get screwed over from the bottom of the lift. That weight needs to be kind of heavy at the bottom. So you got to train both ways. You can't just only train with bands and chains. You got to do what Sully's doing right here. He's, uh snorting some cocaine right there. He's getting ready to go. He's got cocaine all over his hands. Look at that. Wow, that's aggressive. 635 heavy ass pounds. He's going to grab those chubby little thumbs of his. And he's got that hook grip. I got to say, he looks pretty good. He looks pretty like an athlete right here. He's got the socks forked up. He's got the singlet. Very professional. That looked pretty easy. I like that second rep a little bit better. First rep, um, looked like he could have
flex his butt a little bit better, get those hips in there. All this stuff gets to be hard when you get to be as big as Sully's getting. We're out of here. Strength is never a weakness. Weakness is never strength. Catch you guys later. Bye.